Hello friends, I am Arpit and I am here with today's analysis. Today is 29th of August and we are going to cover three very important topics which are in news. We will be covering these topics not only from the viewpoint of prelims but also from the mains viewpoint. So that these topics are delivered to you in a holistic way. So we will be covering three topics. These three topics, the first is Article 35A of the Constitution. Now we covered, you know, Article 370's abrogation, that particular case in Supreme Court which is going on. So, this Article 35A was inserted under the ages of Article 370 only in our Constitution and when Article 370 was abrogated, along with it, Article 35A was also abrogated. Now, this 35A gave some special powers to the people of Jammu and Kashmir, the permanent residents of Jammu and Kashmir. What kind of special powers? The power to, uh, you know, or the right for employment in the state government, the right to, you know, buy property over there, the right to settle down in Jammu and Kashmir. And denied all other people who were not designated as permanent citizens of these rights. The Chief Justice of India, while examining this issue, has clearly stated that Article 35A violated the fundamental right of other people. Other people who were outside of the state of Jammu and Kashmir because they did not have the right to property or right to, you know, get seek employment over there. And to some people staying in Jammu and Kashmir but not designated as permanent residents, they were also denied these facilities by the government over there. So by the abrogation of Article 35A, these facilities are available to the people who were residing in Jammu and Kashmir and to the people who are outside of the state also. So we'll look into the issue in detail over here. Then the next topic which we are going to do is regulating AI. AI stands for Artificial Intelligence. This is, you know, a very much talked about term, artificial intelligence, as artificial intelligence has started to dominate our day to day lives. You own mobile phones, especially the Apple mobile phones. You give voice inputs to the Siri, Siri, please dial XYZ. So Siri will dial XYZ. Siri, what is the temperature outside? Siri will tell you the temperature outside. This is artificial intelligence. Google, you know, has revealed one of its, I would say, tools or products which it has developed. And in that tool, you know, just by examining the cornea of the eye, you know, the Google that, uh, that Google tool will be able to, you know, tell how many kind of illnesses you have by just that examination of the cornea. Because Google has developed that particular tool by using high-end AI technology. There is a video on YouTube circulating where Sundar Pichai is, you know, rolling out this product. Things have been very easy. COVID vaccine certificates have been issued to you by using artificial intelligence. You get that vaccine done, you move out of the vaccination center and you have that certificate with you in your mobile phone. So it is all done through artificial intelligence. These are the examples or I would say the positive examples of artificial intelligence which I gave you. But there are certain threats also. Like deep fakes. Deep fakes are basically those uh, I would say video streamings or video recordings in which there will be a person who will be there in the video. That person will be talking. And you will feel that actually that person is talking. But no, it has been deep faked. They have used the image of that person. They have used the voice of that person just to create this perception that actually this person is speaking. Now, these kind of days, a lot of uh, these days, a lot of kind, uh, a lot of scams are happening in which you receive a video call from your relative or from your known person. And that person, you know, actually seems that, you know, he's your friend XYZ, let's suppose. 
तो दे विल आस्क यू कि यार आई एम इन ट्रबल आई नीड मनी माई मॉम इज देयर एडमिटेड इन द हॉस्पिटल समथिंग लाइक दिस दिल दिल क्रिएट अ स्टोरी एंड यूल फील यार रियली माई फ्रेंड इज आस्क एंड यू ट्रांसफर मनी एक्चुअली यू आर नॉट ट्रांसफर्ड मनी टू योर फ्रेंड योर फ्रेंड वॉज डीप फेक्ड and you have transferred money to the scammers who deep faked your friend so it is having disastrous i would say impacts on the society and that is why we need to regulate ai and why this topic we are covering because you know our prime minister was talking in the b20 summit b20 is basically the business leaders of the g20 countries that was called as the b20 summit and he highlighted this fact that globally we need to regulate ai so that we can have a check on its disastrous impacts on the society ai is good if it is used positively with the examples i gave you but you know ai can be detrimental also a double edged sword it is so we need to regulate ai for this purpose then the last is aditya l1 mission now isro has declared the launch date of this mission and the launch date is september 2 a bit of details about this aditya l1 mission we'll cover and when this mission is launched we'll cover it in length like we covered chandrayaan 3 but yes you know from now onwards this aditya l1 mission will be covered extensively in the newspapers so you understand things in the newspaper so you know the basics of aditya l1 mission we'll see over here in this session okay so let us start with the first topic that is article 35a of the constitution article 35a denied many in j and k their rights cgis said and i am saying that many in CG, many in j and k they were denied of their rights and many people outside of j and k also they were denied their rights people were not allowed to go and buy property go and do businesses over there seek employment over there let's suppose jammu and kashmir state public service commission you could not seek employment before but now you can apply for that so this was there he said that article 35a gave special rights and privileges to permanent residents and virtually took away the rights for non residents so the rights for non residents were took, taken away and gave special rights to the other people obviously a violation of article 14 right to equality then chief justice of india dy chandrachur said 35a which empowered jammu and kashmir legislature to define permanent residents and provide them special privileges denied fundamental rights to others which fundamental rights we'll also discuss now provisions of article 35a gave special rights and privileges to permanent residents now in the future slides in the slides to come we will see the definition of permanent residents who are who were the permanent residents actually hereditary subjects of the state of jammu and kashmir which was you know a princely state at this year at this point of time that is 1927 were termed as you know permanent residents to explain you in i would say uh, brief that those people in 1927 who were living in jammu and kashmir and whose father forefather were also living there they were termed as permanent residents that is it and anyone coming into jammu and kashmir after this 1927 and settling down there were not was not treated as a permanent resident so these special rights were given to permanent residents only which rights three rights actually right to equal opportunity for state employment means only these permanent residents will be having the right to employment in the state government right to acquire property nobody from outside of this this bracket permanent residents were allowed to this acquiring property and settle in jammu and kashmir so this was the three these were the three rights how was article 35a inserted in the constitution we should know that as well it was in introduced through the constitution order of 1954 application to jammu and kashmir this order was called as under article 370 it was introduced so this is the way it was introduced the special rights to permanent residents permanent residents who were told you 
वॉज आर्टिकल थर्टी फाइव ए इन कंसिस्टेंट विद अदर आर्टिकल्स और कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल प्रोविजन मीन्स वॉज इट इन कॉन्फ्लिक्ट विद अदर आर्टिकल्स ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन और प्रोविजन ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन येस डेफिनेटली इट वॉज बट यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट इन आर्टिकल थर्टी फाइव ए ओनली इट वॉज रिटर्न दैट इट विल बी इनकन्सिस्टेंट बट येस दिस आर्टिकल हैज टू बी देर इट वॉज गिवन प्रेसिडेंस प्रेसिडेंट ओवर दोज आर्टिकल्स लाइक फॉर एग्जाम्पल आर्टिकल थर्टी फाइव ए हैड इवन ग्रांटेड इम्यूनिटी फ्रॉम जुडिशियल रिव्यू सो कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल प्रोविजन इज The judicial review is a constitutional provision. So 35A was granted immunity from that. It was mentioned in Article 35A. It also went on to, you know, uh, violate fundamental rights like Articles 14, 19E, 191E, right to settle anywhere in the country, 191F. It was about acquisition of property. It was later, you know, removed. Article 31, right to property, it was also removed later on from the Indian Constitution. But yes, at that time when it was getting inserted, it did violate these Article 21 and Article 22. All these rights were violated. But you know the language used in Article 35A was that Article 35A further mandated that any law which provides for these special privileges, these those three special privileges to this class, this class meant permanent residents. would not violate fundamental rights like articles this it is mentioned that it will not violate don't consider this but in actuality it was violating since now it is no more so these rights have been restored of the people over there now let us look into the impact of removal of 35a also now impact of removal is both hindus and muslims driven out of pok pakistan occupied kashmir in 1947 were not recognized as permanent residents until 2019 2019 was the year when 35a was removed now they are recognized as permanent residents before that since they were not falling in that category or not meeting that criteria of 1927 which we discussed they were not recognized as permanent residents the large population of safai karmacharis brought to j and k for manual work were not given this status despite residing in the state for years they also have this then article 35a had been a hindrance to the growth and flow of investments into j and k despite this class of people known as the permanent residents were misguided to be believing that they were enjoying a privilege that none could take away from them these are the arguments made by the solicitor general of india in front of cgi yesterday and that is why you know i have included them but i have included them in this heading impact of removal of 35a these are the kind of positive impacts so we should know about these things then what else the supreme court remarked now actually to understand this we need to say or we need to understand that you know the cgi also said to the solicitor general that government of india only inserted article 35a you are representing government of india then the solicitor general corrected himself he said that the mistakes of the previous government are rectified by the present government i am representing the present government and yes we agree that you know these were the mistakes obviously he had to say it this way because he is the lawyer representing the government of india the present government who has removed article 35a now what else did the sc remark supreme court remark supreme court said that you removed article 370 article 35a and actually we covered it in that video where you know article 35a and 370 we uh, covered how, did, how was it abrogated in that video we also said that there was this you know president's rule which was levied in the state of jammu and kashmir that time it was abrogated in august the president's rule was there already existing now when a president's rule is existing the state legislative assembly ceases to function and all this responsibility is with the parliament so this was the situation there the chief justice of india now said that you know while removing article 370 and 35a 
ठीक है यू डिड इट यू ऑल्सो चेंज द स्टेटस ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर स्टेट फ्रॉम स्टेट टू यू टी नाउ आर्टिकल थ्री ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन मैंडेट्स द प्रेजिडेंट टू कंसल्ट द स्टेट लेजिस्लेचर बिफोर ऑल्टरिंग द स्टेटस ऑफ द स्टेट डिड यू द सोलिसिटर जनरल सेट सी द लेजिस्लेटिव असेंबली वॉज नॉट देर सो हुम टू कंसल्ट वी शुड इफ यू से दैट कंसल्टिंग द पार्लियामेंट वी से दैट वी हैव कंसल्टेड द पार्लियामेंट बट येस द सी जी आई स्कोल्डेड और आई वुड से बेस्ट द सोलिसिटर जनरल ऑन दिस आर्टिकल थ्री मैंडेट्स दैट If you change the status of a state, if you make a state into a UT, it is mandatory to consult the state legislative assembly. And from this particular line, a question can be framed in the prelims. So you should also understand this line, the the importance of this line, and this this line is mentioned in Article Three, and it was highlighted by the CGI in this case. Okay. So this was all from Article Thirty Five A. ठीक है कीप फॉलोइंग द न्यूज कीप फॉलोइंग दिस पॉइंट की हाउ दिस यू नो केस विल गो वॉट द सुप्रीम कोर्ट विल फाइनली डिलीवर ऑन दिस पर्टिकुलर केस ठीक है नाउ नेक्स्ट इज रेगुलेटिंग ए आई अ ग्लिम्स ऑफ ए आई आई हैव ऑलरेडी गिवन यू द इवेंट वॉज बी ट्वेंटी समिट वेर आर प्राइम मिनिस्टर वॉज टॉकिंग अबाउट आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस रेगुलेशन एट द ग्लोबल लेवल वाई to tackle concerns related to algorithmic bias and its disruptive impact on the society algorithmic bias means you know you rely on let's suppose you might all have heard about chat gpt it is based on artificial intelligence you want to seek any questions or answers to any questions you type on chat gpt chat gpt will give you the answers now chat gpt will give you the answers based on you know its data collected over the years and that actually machine is there kind consider it as a machine chat gpt and it has learned over the years and it is giving you this information but what if this information is biased what if this information is not correct and it is falsely you know input over there so that will give you false results because that is after all a machine not a human the level of interpretation of the humans is you know beyond the level of interpretation of machines or i would say the level of intelligence among humans is beyond the intelligence of machine and that is why the machine's intelligence is called as artificial intelligence so we need to curb the negative impacts of ai on the society that is why the prime minister was seeking that we should be regulating ai at the global stage now this regulation of ai was also talked about when you know uh, sam altman he is the founder of uh, you know chat gpt he visited india a few months ago and uh, you know he also talked about regulating ai but there are some challenges and concerns while regulating ai we'll all look into that but let's suppose no let's let's as of now look into artificial intelligence a boon or a bane artificial intelligence impacts our everyday lives there has been a lot of discussions about how this exciting yet powerful and potentially problematic technology should be regulated as i told you sam altman ceo of openai openai is that company which has created you know chat gpt emphasized on the importance of regulation so let us look into the details first of all what is artificial intelligence in layman terms i have explained but yes in definitional terms we'll see ai is an emerging technology that facilitates intelligence and human capabilities of sense comprehend and act with the use of machines so a machine let's suppose an apple iphone you speak that machine will understand what you are speaking and will respond to you that is artificial intelligence siri is an example in this context okay 
Other examples include manufacturing robots. You give inputs to them, they'll give you the outputs. Self-driving cars, they are using Google Maps or any navigation systems and without drivers, they are going. Okay. Marketing chatbots. Now, every one of us does, does shopping on e-commerce websites. Now, let's suppose you have any concern. So you go on that website like supports Amazon or Flipkart. You click on chat with us. You enter your input. You'll get a response. You enter your input. You'll get a response. The person is not sitting there. A human is not sitting there. It is an, a computer generated response. So chatbot it is called as. Okay. Then deep fakes. I also explained what deep fakes are. So this is where this AI is being used. Concerns with this AI is three major concerns first is it can go wrong chat gpt for instance often gives inaccurate or wrong answers to the queries now chat gpt appeared for upsc prelims I, I think it was the prelims examination of last year 2022 it failed it score it was able to score only around 55 56 marks and that is chat gpt so actually it is not true that it has you know all the information as true you should not blindly rely on that then secondly ai will replace some jobs leading to layoffs in certain obviously you know earlier flipkart used to employ a person who used to chat with us now it has the person has been replaced by chatbots which is based on ai technology so it is leading to layoffs finally ai could be used to spread targeted misinformation it can manipulate election results or, or anything this can create problems so these are the concerns with respect to it now dangers of generative ai now what is generative ai as i told you that you know chat gpt has vast amount of i would say data with it but that data is generative in nature it has been collected over the years and it keeps on changing and accordingly the you know responses also keep on changing that is generative AI. Generative AI is the type of AI technology that can produce various types of content, including text, imagery, audio, and synthetic data. Chat GPT is an example of generative AI. Generative AI can be very dangerous. For example, Chat GPT can amplify existing AI risks and increase potential harm such as discrimination, bias, toxicity, misinformation, security, and all. All these things can happen. Let's suppose uh, you want to uh, you want an image of a man living in Africa so you typed it on chat GPT they showed you an image of a white man living in Africa but over the years you know people have because they have this bias that black people only live in Africa over the years they will generate this thing or these kind of inputs they will feed this kind of inputs in this chat GPT and when, you know, let's suppose two years down the line, you are searching. I want an image from a person from Africa. It will give you a black person's image. So this is how it can lead to discrimination, racial discrimination, things like these. And that is why these are, you know, detrimental. While disinformation is already a problem, fake news and all is already a problem. Chat GPT-4 and other learning uh, LLMs are basically, you know, uh, learning modules okay it can enable more targeted and effective disinformation campaigns privacy can also be a real issue online with respect to this because you know you may be intruding in the privacy or private space of other people in pursuit of gaining more and more information of that person so that is a problem the challenges in regulating ai now if we regulate ai we will be regulating such a thing that is growing very rapidly. It has positive impacts, many positive impacts. So means regulating it, we will be limiting those positive impacts as well. Obviously, we'll be limiting negative impacts, but we'll also be limiting positive impacts. We should look into it in this way. So what will happen? Profitability and efficiency can be lowered. Take care. The use of AI has increased manifold over the last few years. 
It is now used in guiding weapons, driving cars, conducting medical procedures and even writing legal memos, even writing emails, AI is used. So it is kind of a profitable tool which has been developed. But if we regulate it, it can definitely pose questions on profitability and efficiency of AI. It is developing very fast. Every day there is something new. And when you create a regulatory framework, you should be creating a regulatory framework which is long term regulatory framework. But is this possible presently because AI in itself is, you know, exponentially changing or evolving. Let's suppose you created a regulatory framework, AI was here, regulated under this framework, but the other day something new develops, which is out of the regulatory framework, then you'll have to change the regulatory framework or amend the regulatory framework from time to time. So this is a challenge, a big challenge. Now implications of regulating AI, regulation has implications for constitutional rights like privacy, equality, liberty and livelihood. Basically, here what we want to say is if we regulate the governments regulate the government will be intruding too much into our private sphere private sphere which we obviously do not want so the privacy claims of the individual they will be in question the personal data protection bill which we covered the other day is also a kind of intrusion into our private sphere government is exempted from holding our personal data but the other entities are not so the government is intruding into our private sphere or private uh, space, I would say. Similarly, if we regulate AI, AI will or regulating AI will also, you know, mean increased intrusion by the government in the private space of the individuals. Is it needed? Yes, it is needed because, you know, we have to curb the, I would say, uh, negative impacts. Now, Sam Altman also said, that we need to first consider how much computing is there in that particular AI model. If that computing, the, out, the output or the results of that AI model is beneficial for the society, we should not be regulating it. But the output of the results, if they are detrimental to the society like deep fakes and all, we should definitely be regulating it. This was the suggestion given by Sam Altman. Last piece of news for today is Aditya L1 mission. The Aditya L1 mission, ISRO is planning it and the date chosen is September 2, which is not too far. No. Objectives, the Aditya L1 will study the sun's corona, sun's photosphere, chromosphere, solar emissions, solar winds and flares and coronal mass ejections. Like coronal mass ejections are basically, you know, when the heat flares, they leave the sun surface now you might be imagining here no one has gone to the sun this satellite or the the i would say instrument they will melt obviously we are not also going to the sun we are going to a point this point is called as the l1 point langrange one point where is langrange one point we'll see actually this is the earth this is rotating, this is the sun and there are various Langrange points on the orbital plane of the earth. This is the orbit and we consider it as the orbital plane. So L4, L3, L5, L1, L2. This, you know, mission will go to this L1 point. The Aditya L1 mission. It is somewhat, you know, 1.5 million kilometers from the earth and fr from this point, you know, the sun is clearly visible. There will be no impact of, I would say, any kind of eclipses like we have the solar eclipse or the lunar eclipse. This point, a satellite located at this point or an instrument located at this point will not be impacted by you know the eclipses also that is why we have chosen this point okay so but let's see the main objective is to study sun's corona photosphere chromosphere solar emissions so let us look at the parts of the sun this is the core of the sun just like we have the core of the earth 
then radiative zone is there convection zone is there this uh, red one is the convection zone this is the radiative zone this is the convection zone then outer layers photosphere aditya elven has to study this it is visible from the earth the temperature is 4000 kelvin to 6500 kelvin chromosphere 4000 kelvin to 8000 kelvin this is the chromosphere okay transition region 8000 kelvin to 500000 kelvin this is there and this is the main corona that is outer surface 500 kelvin to 1 lakh sorry 1 stands 100000 1 crore kelvin main function or the main job of aditya l1 mission is to study this and i was talking about coronal mass injections you could see the flares coming out from the surface of the sun here these are called as the coronal mass injections okay so this is what we want to study what is l1 orbit l1 l1 orbit refers to langrange or langrange point one one of the five points in the orbital plane of the earth sun system which i just show you where the gravitational forces of a two body system like the sun and the earth produced enhanced regions of attraction and repulsion so attraction and repulsion are enhanced over there on these points these can be used by spacecrafts to reduce the fuel consumption so they can you know with inertia they can keep on moving by themselves with very less fuel consumption or no fuel consumption okay. a satellite placed in the halo orbit around the l1 has the major advantage of continuously viewing the sun without any occultation or eclipses so eclipses or any occultation will not happen over there will we be the first one to launch a spacecraft or a satellite in the l1 orbit no nasa and european space agency have already launched you know a solar and heliospheric observation satellite which is again for observation of the sun so hence we will not be the first country to launch a sun observation mission and not the first one also to be there in langrange point one so this is l langrange point one there it will be no eclipses will impact it take care launch vehicle and payloads aditya l1 will be launched on the polar satellite launch vehicle PSLV with seven payloads. These are the seven payloads, visible line emission coron coronagraph. This is the most important payload. Solar ultraviolet imaging telescope, solar low energy X-ray spectrometer, Aditya solar wind particle experiment, high energy L1 orbiting X-ray spectrometer, plasma analyzer package for Aditya and advanced triaxial high resolution digital magnetometers. What each of these payloads will do? We'll cover in the future videos when this, you know, uh, mission is successfully launched and placed there at the Langrange point one. So this is all from today's session. Keep reading, keep revising and keep studying. This is the only way you will be able to get closer to success in this examination. You will have to work hard. No doubt about this fact. Our job as educators or teachers is to make sure that your hard work goes in the right direction. And we at Vajirao NRD are taking this initiative just to ease your efforts. Let me repeat, just to ease your efforts, efforts has to be made by you. So, we need to understand this point. So, signing off for today, Jai Hind will be meeting you with new and exciting topics tomorrow. Thank you.